There's an old saying that the more things change, the more they stay the same. Last year at the IGSBA Scat Track World Finals, a new pro world champion was crowned as Chris Cachetti dethroned the four-time and defending world champion Jeff Jacobs. But the changes were just beginning. Prior to this year's national tour, the IGSBA rewrote the rulebook, encouraging involvement from many different manufacturers. The result was the most competitive year of racing in recent memory. Victor Sheldon stepped forward to claim his first national title, denying Jacobs his sixth straight national championship. Today, Victor Sheldon returns to Lake Havasu City, Arizona to prove that his championship is no fluke. Fischetti and Jacobs are here as well to take on the best the world has to offer, including national champions from Australia, Japan, Canada, and Europe. All this plus the world championships in freestyle as Performance Jet Ski presents the Scat Track World Finals. Welcome to beautiful Lake Havasu City, Arizona, and the Nautical Inn Resort for this, the 11th Annual $50,000 Scat Track World Finals, part of the IGSBA, the International Jet Sports Boating Association. This five-day event has attracted over 500 competitors from 17 different countries, and 35,000 people have come out to watch the best jet sports racing in the world. David Stanfield, a two-time world champion, Larry Rippenkroger, and Larry, let's talk about the international contingent. They are strong and they're ready to race. Well, they are here. They are not on vacation this year. Probably for the first time in the history of the sport, we have a number of international riders that have a chance of winning either an individual title or quite possibly an overall world championship. Let's start at the top, though. Our national champion, Victor Sheldon. Victor Sheldon had a great season. He would love to cap it off with a world title, but a couple of days ago, injury. Victor Sheldon on his mountain bike about a little over a week ago. Unfortunately, he was involved in an accident. He's got 15 stitches in his knee. Just a couple of days ago was the first time he was able to bend that knee. He's out here this weekend. He really wants to win, but the starts are going to be critical for Victor. He's having a real problem getting up into the tray of a ski on the start. He is still in the title hunt after we've had slalom and pro modified race number one. Pro modified race number one was a runaway for this man, Jeff Jacobs, who he had a disastrous year last year here and not a very good season. It was a rough season for Jeff Jacobs. He comes in this weekend probably with more to prove than anybody else. He has been the most dominant rider in the sport. He's had some bad luck in the past year, but he comes out here this weekend to show that he is not over the hill yet by any means. He is out here to show that his dominance is going to continue for many years to come. And he did that in Pro Modified Race number one. In fact, he's on the new 750 machine, and he lapped the entire field except three riders. Jeff Jacobs really dominated. He's going after the world title. Let's talk about the matchup, though, that the crowd seemed to favor. First and foremost, the defending world champion, Chris Fischetti. Well, Fischetti in the qualifying rounds looked absolutely incredible. He was the only pro competitor to win both of his pro mod race qualifiers, including a heat with the likes of Jacob Sheldon and Nicholas Rios. After Fischetti's performance in qualifying, many put him as the man to beat even above Jacobs. And a world championship repeat looked very much within reach. For today's competition, the master of crowd appeal donned fish fins on both himself and his mascot, and then went out and won the pro slalom competition with his first First of two passes through the slalom course. A tremendous confidence booster for the fish. The slalom competition is one third of the world championship, the other two thirds being the two pro modified race, so it is a tremendous advantage to win the slalom event. Euro champ Nicholas Rios took second and a respectable third going to an injured Victor Sheldon, but it was pro modified race number one where things went bad for the fish. After a first lap tangle with Rios, the fish pulled into the pits with boat problems only to find that the spark plug cap had fallen off. They put the cap back on, finished the race, but his hopes to repeat as world champion are gone. The big news, though, is Nicholas Rios out of Marseille, France, 18 years old, the four-time European world champion. He was very fast early on, in fact, a second place in slalom, but uh, anticipation was building for pro modified race number one. He is very talented. He really is, and he's improved a great deal, and he is the talk of the town right now, the sensation from France, only 18 years old, not a lot of experience yet, but he has certainly got the speed. In qualifying yesterday, he looked absolutely phenomenal, Death decimated his competition, and it looked like it was going to be indeed a showdown between him and Chris Pichetti. Disappointment happened, though. He had trouble at the start. In fact, he even missed a buoy. Pro Mod race number one was not kind to Rios. The same incident that knocked Pichetti's plug cap loose also knocked Rios to the wrong side of a right-hand buoy. Later, after Pichetti rejoined the race, they tangled again, and from there, things got personal. 
even though Pichetti was a lap down, he wanted to let Rios know how he felt about the first lap incident. But it was very entertaining for the 35,000 spectators on hand. Unfortunately, all of this removes these two highly favored competitors from contention for the world championship. But if anything, this will fuel the fire for these two to prove themselves in pro modified number two. So right now, the world championship looks like it's going to be between Jeff Jacobs and Victor Sheldon, but there's going to be some bad feelings on the line. The start is critical. It is, especially for Victor Sheldon, as we mentioned. The knee, if he can get up into the track, get his timing down, it's going to come down to Victor Sheldon and Jeff Jacobs for the the overall title. Jacobs holds a lead of a single point over Sheldon. Basically, whoever finishes in front of the other in Pro Mod Race 2 will be the Pro Overall World Champion. Beautiful conditions for racing. Now let's go to the third member of our team, Todd Harris. Todd? Thanks, you guys. I'm standing knee-deep in beautiful Lake Havasu racing water. And whoever dialed in the weather today, they did a great job. The three days preceding, we've had hail, high winds, flash floods, thunderstorms. But today, it is an absolute beautiful day. Blue skies, water temperature around 65 degrees, air temperature 88 degrees. All the champions are here. It's going to be a great day. The fans are going to get their money's worth. Back to you. Thank you, Todd. For the racers, this is definitely the moment of truth. For Jacobs, the potential to regain his world championship. For Pichetti, to prove that the crown he earned here last year is where it belongs on a day that started out so perfectly. Despite his boat problems in Pro Modified Race 1, Chris Fischetti definitely has the support of the fans here today. The crowd here is proof positive that the interest in personal watercraft racing has grown immensely over the years. Now, Larry, as the racers ready themselves, let's take a look at the course that the IGSBA race director, Glenn Bothwell, has prepared for us today. The course this weekend is wide open and extremely fast. From the beach, the starting straightaway is a little unusual. It angles off to the right enters into a left hand first turn sweeping with a decreasing radius a sweeping right hand turn then we go into the tightest turn in the entire course a hard left I think that's going to be one of the key points of passing today down the front straight into the most difficult portion of the course we have a log jump right after that turn a double yellow right hand turn into a double left red with another log jump in between those two buoys a chicane section and then back out into the long back straightaway, that traditional long Havasu full throttle back straightaway, back through the left-hand side of the course to complete lap number one, and then continue on for a total of 15 laps. Pro modified race number two on the line for the world championship. Chris Fischetti has pole position. Next to him is arch rival Nicholas Rios. The engines are fired up. They're ready to go. Dave McConnell, number 32 on the outside. Victor Sheldon is on the inside. And Victor with a great start. Victor now moves over and takes the whole shot. Nicholas Rios battling for second. Rios goes down and just about run over. It looked like one, oh, two. It looked like two people actually hit Rios. Sheldon in the lead right now. And from the far outside, McConnell with a great start. He is in second. But look at the lead that Victor Sheldon has right now. Victor Sheldon has got his starting time. He figured out he got right up into the tray. Big hole shot. And Dave, the way he's right, you'd never know that he has an injured knee. It is Victor Sheldon, Dave McConnell. Chris Fischetti, Luciano Guimaraes from Brazil, Pointer and Jacobs. Victor Sheldon with a good lead now, approaching the log jumps. 
And look at Victor Style doing the leg drags. His bad leg is still in Trey. A great deal of pressure there. And look at Fischetti making a move for second. Chris, the flying fish, Fischetti moves into second spot. Back to our leader. This is Victor Sheldon. We're going to put the radar gun on him down that back straightaway. Looking for a top speed of over 45 miles per hour. 48.5, he is moving. Like we talked about, that long back straightaway, so famous here at Lake Havasu, and this is a fast course. Let's take a look at the start one more time. Highlighted in the center is Victor Sheldon. Sheldon, with a poor qualifying position, probably has the better angle on that first turn. Under normal circumstances, in the middle of the pack would not be a good starting position, but with the way the start angles off to the right, I think it actually worked to Victor's advantage today. Look at them as they go into the first turn. Rios, just there to the inside, has to dive in hard and catches an edge and goes down. Victor can sweep it, went around the outside, and he's got all the momentum. Rios down in the water. Gocher and Jacobs had to use him as a log jump. Now, Rios is back in ninth place. The Brazilian is in seventh. Here are the top five. Victor Sheldon, Chris Fischetti, Billy Pointer, Jeff Jacobs, and David McConnell, starting from the far outside, is in fifth. Jeff Jacobs right now is charging hard, trying to catch up with Billy Pointer. Billy Pointer, boat number 35. And Jacobs on that 750 for the first time goes by Pointer. Dave Jacobs looks completely adjusted to this new 750. He is riding like a man possessed right now. Jacobs down in the back straight away. His next victim. He's closing in on the world champion, the defending world champion. This is Chris Machetti. And he makes it look real easy. <laughs> Listen to the crowd. Jacobs went by Machetti like he was standing still. Looked like there was no effort involved at all. That is so incredible when you consider who he just passed. Lap times, well the last lap, Jeff Jacobs, 55.3, Victor Sheldon, 56.4. Jeff Jacobs is a second and a tenth faster than Sheldon. But Sheldon has a seven second lead on Jeff Jacobs. Racing action is temporarily sorted out. Let's take a look at our national champion, Victor Sheldon. Victor the Slasher Sheldon got his nickname from the aggressive attitude he carries with him on the race course. Aggressiveness that has rubbed more than one competitor the wrong way. But his racing intensity is deceiving, as off the race course he is one of the most easygoing guys you'll ever meet. Kind of a Jekyll and Hyde thing. I've always raced whatever I've, whatever I've competed, whatever I've been involved in, I've always like wanted to, um, you know, take it to the, to the, you know, to the hill, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, I started riding the jet ski and I really started liking it, you know, and it was just like natural for me to, to race it. So, um, you know, it just kind of fell into place with me. I, I just, I, I love the thing. The thing was just so much fun to ride. My friends rode and just everything about it was just great. So it just kind of, it was very natural to me to, to ha happen for me. Victor is an advocate of many forms of cross training, all with one key ingredient. Time for speed. You know, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a pretty active person, and I like to um, I like to keep busy doing a lot of different things. Um, I started realizing that it, it helps me. Um, pick different lines on the on the jet ski track as well as you know being smooth and if I can be smooth on the go-kart um, you know not missing shifts or what have you just staying really smooth on that it helps me keep keep the drive going and being smooth on the jet ski track as well so um, I think you know it just keeps keeps you sharper on your reflexes and you know keeps you going with the help of the entire Butch's team Victor was able to channel his intensity and innovative leg drag style into a superior combination Winning the IJSBA Pro National Tour. Really winning the, the, the big, the big number one. That's a cha-ching. <laughs> it's a big high. I mean, it's a, it's a good natural high for you. And um, it also helps you. I think it helps you out in your confidence in, in life in general. As far as dealing with people or just being, you know, um, around people, you know, just for yourself. It, I think it helps you out. The added confidence a national championship brings is certainly bad news for the competition. Chances are that his combination of confidence, channeled aggression, and personality will keep the slasher on top for a long time to come.
Back to Havasu, Pro Modified Race number two. Victor Sheldon is still exactly where he needs to be to back up his national title with possibly his first World Pro Championship. His lead is shrinking, however, as Jacobs is only five seconds behind and gaining about one second each lap. With eight laps to go, things are going to get interesting. Our leader, boat number two, just misses a buoy. Victor Sheldon circles back, trying to get there before Jacobs, and they hit! Oh, Victor and Jeff are down! Look at the battle, David! Machete spike by on the inside! Victor Sheldon misses a buoy, circles back, T-bones Jeff Jacobs. Jacobs is now in third, Victor Sheldon in second, and Chris Machete sneaks by both of them. Machete's in the lead. Incredible battle. Victor right now, at all costs, was just trying to stay in front of Jacobs. That is what he has to do. No matter where he finishes, he has to finish ahead of Jacobs to pull off the world championship. Now remember, he is riding with 15 stitches in his right knee. He wasn't walking two days ago. He's going to try anything to win the world championship. Here are the problems, though. Victor running into lap traffic goes up over the buoy. That is considered a miss, but he has to circle back and pick it up. The key now is he wants to do it before Jacobs gets there. There's Jacobs. Victor just rams right into him. Here's another look. And look at this angle. Oh, the impact right into Jacobs' leg. He has got to be feeling some pain now, Dave. And capitalizing on this incident, boat number one with a fin on his back, the flying fish, the defending world champion, sneaks by. He is in the lead. But here's the battle for the world championship. And Jacobs goes down in third. I think that leg is giving him a little bit of problem now. He's got to be having some muscle spasms the way he took a shot in the leg. That's over 300 pounds ramming into your leg. And Fischetti out in front, he says, you guys go ahead and slam into each other. I'm just going to sneak on by. Well, the fit on his back seems to be doing its job. Earlier, I spoke with the ever-entertaining flying fish about his latest diversion. Looks like aerodynamics on the back. Yeah, yeah, we were having a little high-speed uh, technical flutter yesterday, which uh, was developing from a straight, uh, diverse crosswind. So hopefully, I eliminate that with my inverted skag. Your inverted skag. Let's take one more close look at this. And this thing is not legal or legal? Oh, yes, it's legal. It's uh, full uh, aerodynamics are completely legal in the sport of jet ski racing. And I think that uh, it's past tech and uh, flying colors. Well, Larry, what do you think? Maybe it can help you in your freestyle routine? <laughs> you know, I like fish and everything, but somehow I'd just like to see some wind tunnel data first. Here's a look at the top five currently, and for the European fans, Nicholas Rios, the European champion, is up to sixth spot at this point. But all eyes are on Jeff Jacobs. He seems to be the fastest man out on the track, trying to make his way through slower traffic. Jacobs, not his usual smooth self, riding very aggressively now, trying to get by the lap riders. Billy Pointer hanging tough for fourth spot right now. Pointer's really all by himself. And he is, in fact. The leaders are on the far side of the course, and here is that battle on Pachetti out in front, and Victor Sheldon making a charge. Victor Sheldon trying to win this going away. He wants the world title. All he has to do is stay ahead of Jeff Jacobs. He's doing that, but he wants more. He wants by Chris Pachetti. He had him here for a second day, but Pachetti's fought back hard. The crowd is going wild right now. Pachetti's fans are on their feet. Take a look, the top three, Fischetti, Sheldon, and Jacobs are so close together now, two laps to go. And the battle for the world championship is these two, Victor Sheldon and Jeff Jacobs, whichever one finishes ahead of the other, oh, Jacobs goes down. Victor has to do all he can to hold Jacobs off. If he does that, he is the new world champion. And there goes Victor Sheldon, he is down. And Jacobs goes by on the inside. Jeff Jacobs now has control of the world championship if he can just stay ahead of Victor Sheldon. Victor Sheldon in third has that injured right leg, 15 stitches in it. Jeff Jacob, who is riding, has a definitely injured right leg because Victor Sheldon smashed into him. And Chris Fischetti out in front's got a bruised right arm. These guys are riding ragged, and it's an endurance race. It really is. We're late in the race. Fatigue is playing a big role here on top of the injuries. Here's that first problem by Jacobs, but notice how quickly he recovers. He's back up in the tray, right back up on his feet, loses very little time. And now we're going to look at Victor, his bobble up over the log jump. Oh, and his right leg is still in the tray. He bends that knee. That has got to hurt, and Jacobs sneaks by on the inside. I think between the fatigue and the injuries, both of these riders are in a great deal of pain right now. Back to the action. The white flag is coming out. Boat number one with a black background is the flying fish, Chris Fischetti, 24 years old. He leads this race. But the battle for the world championship is between boat number one, white background, Jeff Jacobs, and Victor Sheldon, who is in third. There is Victor Sheldon. It is now or never for him. It is do or die for Victor Sheldon. He has to pull out all the stops and do whatever it takes to get by Jeff Jacobs. It doesn't matter to Victor that Chris is out in front right now. All he's concerned with is the fact that Jeff is in front of him. 
Over the log jump, and now approaching the chicane to the back straightaway. Sheldon to the right side of the screen on the 750, trying to overtake Jeff Jacobs. What a great battle. 35,000 fans on the beach screaming. And take a look at the speed Jeff Jacobs has down the back straightaway. Jeff Jacobs has found the water. He got that thing hooked up down that back straightaway and was able to put some distance between himself and Victor Sheldon. But Sheldon has been looking good through this turning section over here. Check your flag coming out. Winning the battle. Pro modified race number two, the flying fish, Chris Fischetti, relieved. Jeff Jacobs wins the world championship. Jacobs reclaims the title, and for our national champion, a disappointing day for Victor Sheldon. What a spectacular day of racing. I think it's been the best day of racing I've ever seen here at Lake Havasu. Final results, Pro Modified, race number two, Chris Fischetti, Jeff Jacobs, Victor Sheldon, Billy Pointer, Jason Schultz, and the European champion in sixth, Nicholas Rios. And there is Jeff Jacobs, he is obviously in pain, and for good reason. He got T-boned by Victor Sheldon midway through the race. We'll take a look at that one more time. Now, Victor Sheldon circling back to pick up that Miss buoy. And here comes Jacobs, wham, right into him. Here's a better angle. Oh, that impact. I can't believe that Jacobs was able to get back up and finish the race, much less win the overall world championship. That is a real credit to his determination as a world champion. Well, in the heat of battle, anything can happen. Here at the World Finals, everything did happen. It did. In fact, I think the only expectations that were not met was that the young rider from France, Nicholas Rios, did not get off the line and was not able to battle with the American champions. But next year, he'll have another year of experience under his belt. Who knows? For a battered Chris Vachetti, the win must be somewhat bittersweet. Let's go to Todd Harris. All right, and with a very tired Chris Vachetti, Chris, a tough race for you. How did it go out there? Yeah, uh, not such a good start. I motored hard. I got uh, injured in the first motor, which really plagued me throughout the race. Uh, Jeff got by me, that big collision with Victor and Jeff. <laughs> I slotted in there, just yeah. rode smooth and tried to pace my arm. Um, fast enough pace to win. <laughs> All right, you looked a little tired coming down there, but it looks like your fans brought it home for you. Yeah, yeah. I was... yeah! yeah! Yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for a plug cap, he'd be the world champion again, and we all know that. That's right. Yeah! 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 Woo! Woo! Next year! Next year! Um, um, Cool. This is longtime friend Cosmic Miller, never one to mince words, calling it how he sees it. But the official overall result, Jacob, Sheldon, Fischetti, Rios, and a good showing by first-year pro Jason Schultz. In the ultra-competitive Pro X2 class, the pressure of race day is at least as heavy as any other pro class. That pressure was somewhat eased by the unfortunate absence, due to injury, of our national tour champion Tim Judge. Handling the pressure well was defending world champion Matt Allagood. The 18-year-old from Jacksonville, Florida, started off his morning by setting the quickest slalom time of any pro class to that point, a 23-11, fast. But the top four slalom qualifiers had yet to run, including the national tour runner-up and the fastest slalom qualifier, Art Chambers, who qualified almost a second faster than Allagood. No pressure, no pressure. The results of no pressure were the only sub-23 second slalom runs of the day. A stellar 22.80 and a stunning 22.48. Over a half a second faster than anyone else on the water in any class. And plenty good for the win in the Pro X2 slalom, as well as a high five congratulations from Allagood. Chambers was followed by Allagood, Mike Jacobs, and the X2 slalom world record holder Jim Leupold in fourth. In the Pro X2 limited close course competition, in which the boats are allowed relatively few modifications, Matt Allagood dominated with a wire-to-wire -wire win over Jeff Creer, Art Chambers, and Charlie Williamson in fourth, all from the USA. As well as pole position, Allagood carried a two-point lead over Chambers into the Pro X2 modified close course fun. For Chambers, finishing behind Allagood might as well be last and a hard-earned hole shot gave Chambers the advantage that would be difficult for Allegood to overcome. Allegood was in second, Chambers was in the proverbial driver's seat. Well, I knew slalom would help out. I knew coming into close course it was gonna be a tight race. A lot of people were, were counting me the winner before the races even started because uh, the national champion, Tim Judge, didn't show. But Matt Allegood is the reigning world champion and I, I knew he'd be the one I'd have to deal with. Did you know he was behind you the whole race? I felt him behind me after the first couple of laps. I knew if I just keep a nice, st strong, solid pace, 
and not make any mistakes, I'd have a good chance of winning. So that's what I tried to do, is just stay smooth and stay on the boat, and it ended up working for me. Congratulations to our new X2 World Champion, Art Chambers, followed by Matt Allegood. Jeff Prier wins the tiebreaker over Jim Leupold, and two Japanese riders round out the top six. For Art, the ace Chambers, this championship falls in a year that has dealt him the best and the worst life has to offer. His racing career spans most of the past decade with titles including 1985 Expert World Champion. But it was his decision to switch from the stand-up to the X2 ski that allowed him to find the success he was looking for. For a long time it was the jet ski. You know, we, we were on the jet ski for roughly 10 years or so. Uh, two years for play and eight years for race and so I did have a lot of fun on the jet ski and, and raced them and, and had a fair amount of success on them but after the amount of years I had spent on them I was ready for a change I was a little tired uh, and more than anything it was, a, it was a physical thing I couldn't put in the hours training and in, unless you gave a hundred percent on the jet ski you couldn't really be successful and so more than anything it was just time for change so I jumped on the X2 it allowed me to race part-time and still be real competitive because of the fact that the skill level isn't quite as high it's not as uh, an intense of a, a training schedule I was able to race the X2s and and still work and continue doing other things in my life and and yet still be real competitive as a top contender in the Pro X2 class last year the future looked bright for the ace then tragedy struck this past February Art lost his father and best friend to heart failure. Then on May 24th, Art was involved in a serious truck accident that left him lucky to be alive. After the passing of my dad, it, it allowed me to, to refocus on, on my life and, and life in general and, and figure out what was most important and, and what was secondary. And I made it through a, a real, real tough time and, and I, I did okay. And uh, I figured after that, the other mishaps that I had, that the car accident that I was involved with, uh, getting hurt at, at one of the first races there with my leg, it, it didn't really bother me too much. It wasn't the kind of thing that was going to get me down. And, you know, I made it through probably one of the, uh, the biggest problems I was ever going to have to face with the losing my father. And after that, it, it doesn't get any worse. I mean, if I, if I break a boat, if I lose a race, if I have any kind of problem, nothing will compare to the problem I face with him and, and I figure if, if I could get through that there's nothing that'll, that'll ever get me down. New this year to the IGSBA race program is the runabout class consisting of many of the larger personal watercraft. A heavy hitter in the class is Beau Dupree from Palm Bay, Florida, the southeast being a hotbed of racing for the runabout. In the open runabout B modified race, Beau Dupree dominated from start to finish with a solid hole shot. Now the first thing you notice in the runabout class is the cornering technique of leaning out on a turn, keeping the pump hooked up, which in turn acts like a hydraulic vacuum keeping the boat in the water. In the end, Dupreece dominated with an easy win, followed by Robert Magpock, Matt Saba, Chad Lloyd, and Garrett Haxby. A first in slalom and a second in limited closed course, combined with Dupreece's modified win, earned him the Open Runabout B Overall Championship. On a weekend filled with extraordinary racing action, perhaps the most exciting was in the women's pro class. Expectations were high for the three-time reigning world champion, 20-year-old Christy Carlson from Long Beach, California. Christy had just wrapped up the national tour, winning 19 of 20 heat races, including the qualifiers. Today, however, she would not be without competition. Things started out normal enough with Christy. She qualified for the slalom competition with the fastest time in her class. Needing to beat Ashley Hollenbeck's time of 25.51, she ran a 25.03, almost a half a second quicker than Hollenbeck, winning the first of two competitions for the pro women. She also continued her perfect record, winning every IGSBA slalom event she had entered this year. Business as usual in slalom competition, but in closed course there was a completely new challenger, 22-year-old Karine Paterel from France. The European women's champion ran unofficial lap times that were two to three seconds faster than Christy Carlson during qualifying. Christy readily admits that her greatest fear is getting a poor race start, and that fear became reality. 
with pole position on the powerful 750, Kareen rocketed away from the rest of the field, burying Carlson in her wing. With clean water ahead of her, Kareen stretched out her lead, running lap times one second faster than Carlson, who had worked her way up to fourth place behind Japanese national women's champion Kamiko Matsuguchi. In a controversial move, Carlson railed Matsuguchi while attempting to pass. Kamiko was unable to restart her boat and was forced to drop out of the race. On lap six, the battle for second raged on between number 45, Melinda McLaughlin, and the South African women's champion, Michelle Robinson, on S1. Rounding the end of the back straight, Melinda ran straight into the buoy, while on the next turn, Michelle ran over the buoy. At the same time, Kareen had her hands full, lapping a determined Don Wood. As the race reached the halfway mark, things took a serious turn for the worse for Kareen Patrell as she high centered herself on the first log jump. That was the break Christy Carlson needed to get past Kareem Patrell and back into third place behind Michelle Robinson and Jill Orton. But Robinson's problems were far from over and a Miss Bowie gave number 80 Jill Orton the lead. In an attempt to retake the lead, Michelle tangled with the log jump, taking out both herself and Carlson in the process. But a fast recovery by Carlson left her in second. This massive confusion left Jill Orton with a lead that even she didn't know she had. When the checkered flag dropped, Jill Orton was the winner. Christy Carlson was second, good enough to combine with her slalom win for the overall world title. It was grueling. I had a rough start, terrible start. I had nothing but jet spray in my face and I finally came up and I didn't know where I was in the race. I just kept going and passing and got Kumiko and I bashed and uh, we got hung up <laughs> and a few people passed. And the whole time in the race I really didn't know where I was and by the last lap I thought I was in the lead and uh, and the final, and then she got the checkered flag, and I was like, whoa, I would have pushed a little harder at that last lap, but I pushed all the way through, and, and uh, Jill rode a great race, really smart and consistent, and that's what it took to win out here. I just kept thinking, okay, I gotta, I gotta pace myself, I gotta keep breathing, and they'll let me know when it's time to stop, and I guess I didn't see the flag because the sun is right behind it. And I didn't, I mean, I didn't even think there was a chance for first. <laughs> so this makes Havasu a pretty special place for you now. Oh, this is the most incredible thing that's ever happened. Winning her first pro women's close course event of her career was Jill Orton, followed by Carlson, Patrell, and Robinson. Right behind the grandstands is Performance Alley, where you can get your hands on all the new models. Well, maybe not all the new models, this is where you'll find anything and everything that has anything to do with personal watercraft. If you don't see it here, it doesn't exist. And maybe it shouldn't. We have survived slalom competition, close course racing, and now the 35,000 fans are ready to go with freestyle competition. They say tricks are for kids, no, tricks are for adults here in freestyle competition. It's very popular. You, a two-time world champion, not competing because of uh, an injury. Yeah, I broke an ankle two months ago. I've got four screws in there now, and it's going to be another month before I can ride, so I'm a little disappointed, but I am looking forward to the show today. And we'll see you next year. Let's talk about the top three. Jeff Pants out of Palm Desert, California. Jeff Ford, the X2, has an injury to his forearm, but he's still very strong. He is indeed, and if there's any Anybody that is well polished coming into this weekend would probably be Jeff. He's been riding four to five days a week preparing for this. And knowing Jeff, he comes in with a couple of new moves as well. Number two on the tour last season was Showtime Lloyd Berlue out of Florida. If there is a crowd favorite in freestyle, it's got to be Lloyd Berlue. They've been behind him all, all season long on the national tour. And here at Havasu, I think they're going to be behind him again. And that helps your scores. Let's talk about the world champion, Scott Watkins out of uh, Hollywood, Florida, now living in Vista, California. Scott is very adept at performing in all conditions, except he's very busy, though. Yeah, and if there's anything that might hinder Scott this weekend is just his outside schedule. He has had time to ride every day this week coming into it, but it's not as much as what he would like. But knowing Scott, he'll be out there giving it 110%, so look for a good show from Scott. We are set to go. The Freestyle World Championships. The Scat Track World Finals continue from the Nautical Inn Resort, Lake Havasu City, Arizona. We are set for freestyle competition. The judging basis, 
difficulty, precision, and variety of the two-minute routines. High and low scores are thrown out. A perfect score is 50 points. Right now, Robert Aldos with 46 points is in the lead. On the water, we have Showtime Lloyd Berlue, the 1990 World Finals Amateur Freestyle Champion. Lloyd with a flexibility move, starting off his routine. He is, without a doubt, the most flexible rider out there. With a turnaround in the tray. Now, one hand, a one hand 360, good move. The water not exactly that smooth. There is a huge flotilla of boats on the far outside of the closed course competition arena, and there's still a lot of chop out there, but Lloyd is making it, well, there's one slight mistake, but he's making it look pretty good. He is. The one thing I do notice about Lloyd, though, he doesn't seem to be putting the energy into his routine that he usually does. There's a neat move. That's, I haven't seen that before. Backwards on the handle pull into a barrel roll. That's a new move, Dave. Lloyd Berlou out of Florida, originally from New Jersey, second at the World Finals in 1991. He would love to win it today. Up over the front, under, and back up behind the ski. That is a movie you don't usually see on a stand-up model. That was first done by Robert Aldous. They call it the Aldous flop. He is trying to take over the lead. Robert Aldous in the lead at this point with 46 points. He is looking for some high scores from the judges. And I think he's setting up for his famous handstand. There it is, folks. That one scores well with the judges. A very difficult routine, even in smooth water, much less the chopping conditions we have here right now. Now hold the hood. Looks like he's going to go into a Hollywood corkscrew, but he's got his leg up there for a variation. Lloyd once again showing his flexibility. Well, Lloyd drives out and he's maintaining in this split position. And a 180 into a 360 and another one, and that ends his routine for Lloyd Showtime Berlue out of Florida, and the crowd loved it. Good routine by Lloyd, and I think we're going to see that that's going to put him into the lead, Dave. Once again, perfect score is 50 points. And nines across the board. The lowest one looking to be a 9.2. Our next competitor takes to the water. Carlos Passoma from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. But scores coming through for Lloyd Berlou, 46.9. He takes over the lead. On the clock, the Brazilian national champion, Carlos Passoma, trying to impress the judges. First time the judges have had a look at Carlos. Yeah, and I think that actually is a bit of a disadvantage for him. The judges, if you're a name in the sport, that's certainly going to help your scores. I've had the opportunity to see Carlos perform down in Brazil. He is good. He is really good. Another thing working against him is he is on a 650. You don't see that very often, someone doing freestyle on a 650. But there's a one-handed 360. Good move. Again, two-minute routines being judged on difficulty, precision, and variety. And he spins it around into a 180 comes unstuck just a little bit, but he's going to stick with his routine. Again, only two minutes to perform everything, so if he makes a slight mistake, he's got to continue with. There's a good one. One foot out of the tray into a submarine. A one-foot power sub coming up one-handed. I haven't seen that combination before. That's a good combination. Nice, quick pirouette standing in the tray. He's got some difficult moves. If I can critique his routine, all I can say is that he's taking a little bit too much time setting up for each one of his tricks. But the number of tricks he's doing and the difficulty of them is very high. Australian backwards barefoot into a 180 and a nice transition up on the hood cover. Again, not completing all the tricks, but he's within his routine. And he does a very unique submarine. Submarine standing on the hood, pulls it off, comes up. That's two submarines very close together. A lot of water in that machine by now. That's going to change the handling drastically. Less than 15 seconds. He's got good sponsorship from Brazil coming up here, putting on a good show, a little 360, less than five seconds to go. Spinning around for the final trick, a fountain ending the routine. And a good job for the Brazilian national champion, Carlos Pessoma, 46 points. Up next will be the reigning IGSBA national tour champion, Jeff Kantz. As he readies himself for his routine, let's take a moment to meet our national champion. The kamikaze headband is your first clue that the person wearing it has a no holds barred gusto for life. Jeff Kamikaze Kans has managed to do what many dream of, incorporating his livelihood into an active, enjoyable lifestyle with those closest to him at a place with plenty of room to do whatever the day calls for.
Yeah, I like I like being outdoors. Uh, that's kind of the reason why I live in the desert. It's, it's a real fun place to be. There's a lot of fun things to do outdoors. Like uh, we can roar blade like all year long. It's real fun and and mountain bike and ballooning is real fun. It's a real healthy atmosphere to be in. That's why I like living here. While Jeff has raced in competition in the past, he found freestyle to be much more rewarding for the effort put into it. Something that seems to happen naturally. Three event wins don't hurt the fun of it either. Yeah, a anybody would like doing something that they're good at and have, uh, and have fun doing it at the same time. And uh, a bonus on top of that is getting paid for it. <laughs> that's, that's even better. So, uh, I love doing freestyle. It takes more than natural talent and a lot of practice to win a national championship. Jeff is quick to give credit to his coach and fiance, Dana Tropea. It really is a team effort. Together, Jeff and I make routines. He goes out and does them. I time them. Then he comes in and he tells me, and I tell him how he does. And I really enjoy spending this quality time with him. It's a lot of fun. Cynics may view Jeff's lifestyle as a fantasy that will burst a disaster in years ahead, but he sees things quite differently. In fact, his plans are quite down to earth. Yeah, I, I plan to stay in the jet ski industry. Uh, I've met a, a bunch of great people. Um, the sport's given me a lot, and I want to put a lot back in. What else can you ask for? Here he is, Jeff Kamikaze Camps, 33 years old, out of Palm Desert, California, by way of Pittsburgh, PA. The overall 1992 Pro Freestyle National Series champion on the X2. Jeff, up onto the hood, operating a throttle with his foot. There is no way to do that trick without going wide open. That name, Kamikaze, well earned by this man. Here he comes again. And he really manhandles this big machine as Scott Watkins watches on. He is our last competitor. And critiquing Jeff's routine here. Now, the big difference between him and Carlos earlier, you'll notice how quickly Jeff goes from one trick to the next. Very little time transition between moves. He really mixes up his routine. He goes really quick. He does some moves on top of the craft, uh, underneath the water, and actually flips the boat underneath as well. I mean, he does everything, you can imagine. That was a good move we just saw a moment ago, the ski. Now he's going to up over the front, up the back with the all those flop. Now normally you would just accelerate out of this move, but look at this. He's got the ski sitting still, walks around to the front, and then walks back around onto the seat again. That's a great move. A great routine thus far for Jeff Kamikaze Kentz. There's a bell roll sitting on the hood, coming back up in the sitting position into a tail stand, now going into a tail spin. Jeff Kamikaze Kantz out of Palm Desert, California, the defending national freestyle champion, going after a world title here today. One hand, submarine, coming up backwards. This is a new trick Jeff talked about. He calls this one the achy, breaky, bakey. And it looked like a mistake there, but then when he saw him come up backwards, what a great move. Spins around. Spinning around 180 up towards Shaw. Found it in the routine for Jeff Kamikaze Kent. And the crowd loved it. Let's see what his coach thinks. And a big hug from Dana. And the judges scores, and they are great. I think we've got a new leader. Oh, and the coach gets a, a down to the water as well. 9.7. A total of 48.5 points. He is our new leader, Jeff Kantz. Well, we still have our defending freestyle world champion to go, Scott Watkins. As he readies himself, let's take a look back at the swimsuit competition held earlier today.
definitely a patriotic year for swimwear. Our final competitor of the day will be Scott Watkins. Known as Hollywood, originally from Hollywood, Florida, he's going to try to beat 48.5. Jeff Kantz is in the lead right now. Perfect score is 50 points. Scott Watkins is 33 years old out of Vista, California, the sixth year pro. And Dave, just moments ago, a surprise announcement as Scott starts the routine under the log jump. This will be Scott's final freestyle competition. He has decided to retire after this event today. Well, I've heard that before. Hopefully he will because he is an incredible performer. The two-time world champion won the titles in 1990 and in 1991. And he is looking strong in the early moments of his two-minute routine. Perfect routine so far. Backwards barefoot transition back into the tray. Up close to shore, but pulled it off beautifully. That is a very difficult move right there. One foot, 360 up on the hood. Extremely difficult. On the National Series this year, third overall, somewhat of a disappointment. He would like to end his professional career with a big win here. A little bobble there, though. Slight bobble there, but he was going for a new move, a new transition. There's a one-hand submarine up, one-handed. Looking good. And there's Jeff Kantz cheering him on. Good supporter, both those guys good friends. Yeah, good friends. In fact, Jeff Kantz drove the, the team rig around this summer with Scott skis inside of it as well as mine. Scott Watkins now back up to speed. The crowd waiting his every move. And he has got some new ones, and you can expect a, a big finish now with less than 15 seconds to go. There's a high hop into a barrel roll. That's a good transition. A new move this year for Scott Watkins. There he's going for a deep sub, 180. Good, clean routine. And that horn ends the two-minute routine for Scott Watkins and a six-year pro career for Scott Watkins. And the crowd comes to their feet. Scott needs a 48.6 to take over the lead. And the judges scores. High score of 9.8. You tally him up. A 48.2, not enough. Scott Watkins ends his pro career in second place here at the World Finals. Congratulations to Jeff Kantz. Right now, let's go to Todd Harris with Jeff. It's a new year and we have a new world champion in Jeff Kantz. Jeff, congratulations. How about that competition this year? Oh, it was tough all the way through, I'll tell you. Was it hard dethroning the world champion, a sentimental favorite, Hollywood Watkins? Uh, it was the hardest thing I ever did in my life, you know. He's my best friend and, uh, and I hated to, to beat him on his last time. <laughs> but it had to be done. But it had to be done. Okay, now I asked Scott the same question last year. How soon do you start preparing for next year with the big bullseye in your back? You're the marked man. Uh, we take a couple months off. I need a break. We've been practicing real hard, training. Um, my sponsors and, and my fiance, and they've treated me real good. And you know, I, I have to give them a lot of credit, you know, because they 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 pretty much pulled me through this whole thing. All right, the 1992 world champion in freestyle, Kamikaze Jeff Kantz. This IJSBA sanctioned event has been brought to you by Scatrack, the impeller experts, and by Performance Jet Ski, world dominators in watercraft performance products. A fantastic weekend of racing here at the Scatrack World Finals, the Nautical Inn Resort in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, hosting 35,000 enthusiasts and just returning from a brief visit to the hospital is our overall world champion, Jeff Jacobs. He is standing by with Todd Harris. Todd? Thanks, you guys. 1992 brings us a new world champion, but a very familiar one in Jeff Jacobs. Jeff, it's got to feel good to be back on top again. Oh, it does. It feels great. You know, for my sponsors and myself to come to the biggest race of the year and to perform like we did today, it means a lot to me. Tell me about one of the most exciting races ever run here at Havasu today. Yeah, that's what they say. It was a pretty exciting race. You know, I just got a lousy start, and uh, I just knew if, if I wanted the championship, I'm going to have to go out there and earn it. And uh, Victor had a great start. He whole shot it, and... Uh, you know, he missed that buoy, unfortunately for him, and came back around and injured and hit me in the leg and set me back a little bit. But, you know, I wanted it more than I think anybody out there. I needed it. I wanted it. I want the target back on my back. I want to be number one. So that's what I did. Okay, what's going to be for you in 93? Is it going to be an all-new year? Any changes? Oh, yeah. We're going to see, I, I think I'm going to see a lot, a lot of changes for myself and for my sponsors. And, uh, you know, for horsepower, I think 93 is going to be my season, so I'm looking forward to it. But 
right now I'm going to enjoy what I what I did today, and uh, I got the whole winter to uh, sit back on my world championship. All right, this is the marked man. They'll be shooting for 93. Jeff Jacobs, world champion. Back to you guys. Thank you, Todd. Congratulations to Jeff Jacobs and all our pro world champions. On behalf of Todd Harris, Larry Rippenkroger, I'm David Stanfield saying so long from the Scat Track World Finals. Hotel accommodations furnished by the Nautical Inn Resort and Conference Center.